right. A manhunt continues in Charleston, South Carolina, for a man who went into the um, Emanuel AME Church in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, and, and sat there and, and watched a Bible study group pray for an hour. And then he stood up and opened fire. Nine people are dead this morning. And we are getting new information, and this is from a law enforcement source who said witnesses told him that the gunman, before he opened fire, said, I'm here to kill black people. Um, Nick Valencia is on the ground in South Carolina. He's continuing to investigate this. When he gets more information about this, I'll let you know. But again, before that gunman opened fire, he did say something to his intended victims. I'm here to kill black people, and that's why indeed police are investigating this as a hate crime. I want to bring in now Jason Johnson. He worked on Clementa Pinckney's campaign back in the 90s, and Reverend Craig Robinson, he's the pastor of the Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church. Of course, that state senator, a victim in that shooting rampage. And, and Jason, I want to start with you because he was such an amazing man. You worked on his campaign for state senator. He was only, what, 23 years old at the time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Clem, Clem was just a couple years older than me. Uh, it was the first campaign that I had ever run. And he was the hometown boy made good. All he cared about was serving his community and serving God and speaking for everybody. He had a heart and a soul and a love for South Carolina and his community that is unmatched. And I've worked with a lot of campaigns. And I cannot personally express how painful this is. This isn't just political. This is personal. This is an absolute tragedy. Um. Reverend Robinson, this, this, the information that uh, we just got into CNN, that before the gunman opened fire, he said, I'm, I'm here to kill black people. It's just, um, I don't even know how to ask you the question or phrase it correctly, sir. Well, it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a tragedy, and it is, it's something that's so unfathomable that it, it's understandable that you can't formulate a question. Um, and when you think about the, the many instances, even within this last year of violence against black bodies and black institutions, it's, it's, it's heart wrenching and it's, and it's, it's truly unthinkable. All right, I'm, I'm getting more information in, which is why I'm not um, so totally attentive, and I apologize for that. But the new information is the name of the suspect. Charleston police have now identified him as Dylan Roof of Lexington, South Carolina. I want to bring back in Matthew and Jonathan to help us parse this out. So I guess you were right, Matthew. They knew the make of the car. They ran the license plate, and perhaps that's how they got the name. But as far as we know, he's still on the run. Sure, sure. Well, now you're going to see the investigation go into a whole different spin. First, we identify, then we hunt, and then we capture. He will be in cuffs at some point very soon. I guess it's no surprise that he's a native South Carolinian, Jonathan. Right, right. And, uh, and you know, that's typical because of the small area that they're at. You know, Charleston is a very, it's a, it's a small town, or it's a small city, but it's, it, He's going to go back to what he knows. We're not talking about prisoners that escaped like up in New York uh, that are on the run. This guy, he's definitely on the run, but most likely he's going to go back uh, eventually to his home, to somebody that he knows. He's going to reach out to somebody, and, and people are going to be able to identify where he's at. All right, uh, I do predict that. Let, let's go to Charleston right now to Nick Valencia. He's been following this breaking news. Tell us what you know, Nick. New updates here just into CNN with the uh, following information from the city uh, of Charleston Police Department. We can now positively identify the gunman as Dylan Roof of Lexington, Kentucky, with a birth date of April 3rd, 1994. We had mentioned that that vehicle suspect uh, showed up in a dark four-door sedan. We're now getting a broader description, a more specific description, I should say, of that car he was in, saying that he was driving a black Hyundai with a vehicle tag LGF. 330 and control them if you can if you have not already pull up that uh, suspect's image police are encouraging the public uh, if you know anything about this uh, suspect Dylan Roof just named by the city of uh, Charleston Police Department if you know anything uh, I've seen anything the smallest tip will help according to local police and the FBI involved as well as regional authorities uh, what we can tell you is that this shooting happened at about uh, 905 the first calls coming into the police department of nine people dead among those killed we can positively 
positively identify State Senator Clementa Pickney, who also coincidentally, Carol, happens to be the pastor uh, at this church. Uh, police actively searching for this suspect. Just name, new information, just into CNN, Carol. All right, Nick Valencia, continue to gather information. I sure appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Back to you, Jonathan. Um, well, obviously, this guy didn't hide his face, so he, he couldn't be surprised that police were able to identify him so quickly. Right. I'm telling you, that hair gave it away. That it, Now we're seeing real uh, pictures of this individual. His haircut and his car, uh, as soon as they were able to identify this, um, he just, he really stands out. And I just want to say one thing. Somebody from Twitter, you know, I do work social media quite a bit. Somebody just wrote on there that I was blaming the church uh participants for the massacre. That is absolutely not true. This is a, an insane individual who's bent on destruction, but what the point that I'm trying to make and the reason I'm trying to make this clear is people need to be aware that we live in a world now where these things happen. Be aware. Just be aware of your surroundings so that you can at least get a head start on somebody like this and run and know that this is a potential that this can happen. Matthew, do you think he's he's very far away? I mean, sometimes these, these kinds of people kill themselves, right? Sometimes well, well, they flee to where they know, <laughs> and sometimes they actually have a plan. Well, in law enforcement, we look at best practices, and we look at what's happened in the past that bring us here. Most of the overwhelming majority of active shooter incident, incidents, the suspects have either killed themselves, engaged police, or they were on the run for a very short period of time, and in most cases, they didn't try to hide their identity. That's a part of their control, and that's a part of the sickness. And I, I think that's exactly what you see here. Listen, most churches are going to have CCTV cameras and security cameras up because they're just like everywhere else. And our churches and our schools are our most vulnerable mentally. Um, do, do I still have um, the Reverend with me? Because uh, I'd like to ask you about that. I'm sorry, do we still have the Reverend? Yes. Reverend, I, I just want to get your reaction to our conversation. What do you think? I'm still just dumbfounded. Um, that's it's 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 just I'm I'm at a loss for words, which is a rare thing. Um, just thinking about the people in prayer, thinking about uh, the type of hatred that has to go through someone's mind, and and I and I and I hope it's clear that he wants to be he wants to be known. He wants this to be seen. Uh, and that's that's a different level of, of cruelty and meanness that 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 this world really needs to be healed from. Um, I I'm just in prayer with all of the people in South Carolina, uh, the AMEs and the Seventh Episcopal District, um, and I'm praying that he is found quickly and that justice is brought swiftly. Um, yeah. I, mean, I hope you're right, I, sir. Jason, Jason Johnson, you still with me? Yeah, I'm still here. I Carol. just wanted to ask you a question about um, um, Reverend Pinckney. He became a reverend when he was 18 years old. Yeah. He became a state senator when he was 23. He was only 40 years old when he died. It's just an unbelievable tragedy. I mean, I'm, I met Clem, it was 97, and there had the Supreme Court had just redrawn districts in the low country of South Carolina. So he was first he was forced to run for reelection right after he had won. And and a friend of mine asked me to come down there and I ran his campaign. And and I, and I have to say this, this may not be popular, but it's the truth. Now is the time for us to talk about politics when this tragedy is happening. There's people want to say, well, it's a per yes, it hurts personally, but this is the time that we need to talk about mental health. It is the time we need to talk about guns. He wasn't just a man of God. He was also a man of, of, of commitment to his state and to his government. And I think if we separate those issues, we don't realize how tragic and how serious the action was by this young man. Well, you know, North Charleston, where Walter Scott was shot in the back by that police officer, and the police officer was later indicted for murder, right? The right. community, both black and white, they drew together. That was yeah. one place in this country that did it right. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. And, 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 and people, will, people will rally around this situation. There is, there is a sickness sickness not just in this young man but in a country that can produce someone that can pray with people for an hour and then open fire 
that is something that makes us reflect on what kind of messages we are sending to young people, what kind of responsibility we're placing, and how we portray race in this country. And I don't think that can be separate. I think Charleston will band together, but the idea is to stop this from happening again and to root out the attitude that leads to this kind of behavior. All right. Thank you, Jason.